Hey guys, welcome back to a new video in this channel. Today we have a special video because this is a bonus video for all of you that have gotten our rigging course. This is another rig that I'm going to show you. We're going to be doing a camera rig and I'm going to be talking about the principles of rigging. So if you've already seen our basic rigging video, then all of this should be easy peasy for you guys. However, if you have not seen our newest rigging course, I invite you to check the links down below so that you see uh, the very cool course that we just finished and that's available for you. Uh, we cover a lot of different rigs and situations that are going to be really, really helpful for your 3D career. So let's go. I'm in the Strath uh, clay render uh, scene right now. It, everything is hidden uh, for now because I'm going to be working on the camera rig. Now, probably if you guys have seen uh, like behind the scenes of movies and animation shorts and stuff like that, you've seen that people use uh, camera rigs, which are like this mechanical devices that they use to move the cameras around and have a better control of the of the shots, right? And you might be wondering, why, why do we need a, a camera rig? Well, imagine we want to do something very simple. For instance, I'm going to go here into rendering. I'm going to create a new camera. And imagine I want a shot where the camera is moving forward, but at the same time, I'm using a little car to move the camera backwards to create like this sort of like very... Um, like uh, I believe it was uh, Psycho from Hitchcock or him or Vertigo, Vertigo, uh, where you get like this very elongated shot. You you won't be able to animate complex things with your camera if you're only animating the camera. That's why a rig is very important because it adds more components to the whole thing to give you more tools, more options as an animator to create more interesting things. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. Now, uh, just to make this thing a little bit nicer, I am gonna move this thing up 170 units so that it matches roughly the uh, level of the eyes. And I'm gonna press Control A. I'm gonna go into the camera shape. And down here in the object display, I'm gonna change the locator scale to something like a, like a 10. So the camera is a little bit bigger and we can easily select it. I'm gonna rename this camera. This is gonna, camera is gonna be called a Rig Shotgun. For those of you who have the course, you know how important rigging is or naming conventions are because you want you to keep your rig super, super clean. So the rig shotgun is going to be right here. Now I'm going to model something very, very easy. I'm going to go into the uh, curved surfaces. Now let's do geometry. I'm going to model like a little car here. I'm going to make the base. Let's go right here. Move this up. I'm going to create the wheels. Let's make them like super universal wheels. So they can move in all directions. They're not gonna be moving, of course. They're just they're just meant to be a, a visual reference of where of what this thing is doing. So something like that. And we're gonna create a cylinder, which is gonna be our uh lower make element. We're gonna grab vertex and with a V, I'm gonna snap to point, which is gonna snap right to the focal length or the, the, le the lens right there. And I am gonna move this thing back because I don't want this to be uh, touching the lens. It could create some uh, problems later on. So all of this, guys, I am going to combine all the meshes. I'm going to delete the history, of course, and I'm going to call this a uh, rig camera underscore geo. There we go. So we have two of the main components ready. We have our uh, camera and a little bit of geometry. Now we need to add the joints, and joints are the base of rigging. Joints are these objects inside of Maya that will allow us to combine several different things and connect several different things so that they behave in the way that we want. And a joint is nothing more than a transformation node that has, that has an extra little thing called a joint orient. So it remembers how the joint is oriented. We're not going to be talking about joint orients right now because we really don't need them. We can align them to the world and they're going to be just fine. But later on, especially if you take the course, of course, of course, uh, you're going to see how important the, the rotation of the joints is. So I'm going to create the first joint, and on the options, I'm going to make sure that this joint is set at zero. I'm also going to make sure that this thing is turned on, which is x-ray joints, so that we can see the joints through the geometry. And usually joints are really small, so I'm going to change the radius to something like 10. Radius do not impact um, anything. There's just visual, um, like a visual output here for our joints. And we're going to call this camera, or yeah, yeah let's call this camera root joint, okay, which is the first joint. Then I'm going to duplicate this car this joint, control D to duplicate it, and I'm going to snap it with V key to the point of the cylinder, the upper point of the cylinder, the pole right there. And this one's going to be called camera shape joint. Now, as you can imagine, we're going to have two joints, and this is going to give us two degrees of freedom because we're going to be able to control the camera through the camera shape joint and through the little card down there. 
So now, here's where one of the most important parts of uh, the rigging process is going to come into play. We need to parent this joint to this joint. So I'm going to select the second one, then the first one, and hit P, which will parent the joint. A parent is nothing more than a direct connection between two objects, and whatever happens to the parent object, the son or the child object is going to follow. So if we move the root joint, as you can see right here, everything else is going to move. Now, the camera it's going to be parented directly onto the shape joint, like this. Because since the camera is not a geometry, we can't skin it, but we can't parent it. So now, if we grab this joint and we rotate it, the camera is going to rotate it with it. And if we grab this joint and we move it, the camera is also going to move with it, which is very, very cool. Uh, now we need to connect the joints to the uh, geometry. And the way we normally connect joints to geometry is through a process called skinning. So I'm going to select both joints, I'm going to select the geometry and I'm going to go into the rigging tab and I'm going to say skin, bind skin. We're going to use selected joints, closest distance, max influence, whatever. Everything is fine right now because we're going to be changing the skins. So now, as you can see, the colors have changed. And if I were to move this object right here, everything is going to move with it. However, if I move the second joint right here, some parts of the geometry are not going to move exactly like I'm expecting them to. Here's where the, one of the tricky parts about skinning comes into place, which we also cover in the video, by the way. Wink, wink. So we're going to grab this guy right here. And uh, I'm going to go into skin, paint skin weights. And this will allow me to tell Maya how I want each of these two bones to affect the different vertices of the object. And in this case, it's super simple. That's why I wanted to show you this, guys, because if you've never done rigging before, you're going to be able to follow this. And this camera joint, even though it's super simple, might be useful for you in, in a couple of projects. So I'm going to go here to the camera shape joint, which is the second joint. I'm going to hit the paint option, and I'm going to hit replace with a value of 1. And I'm going to paint all of the top vertices here with a value of 1, like you're seeing right here. So what's happening here, I'm actually going to use color ramp, because I want to make sure that these guys are completely, completely white. What's happening here is I'm telling Maya, hey, I want this upper vertices right here to be completely influenced by the bone or by the joint that's up here. So wherever this joint goes, those are going to follow. So if I move these things down, the cylinder is going to shrink, as you can see there. If I move this like sideways, everything is going to follow. Okay, so even though that's something that you might not want to do, you're going to have the option. Now I'm going to go to the other uh, joint or select the geometry again, go to the root joint, and now I need to make sure that every single part on the other vertices is also being affected 100%, but now from the root joint. So I'm going to hit uh, replace. I'm going to go into the stroke and move the radius like really, really high so that I can paint everything a little bit faster like this. There's other ways to do it, but since this is such a simple geometry, this sure works just fine. Just paint like this, like this. There we go. There we go. So now, if I were to move the upper joint, we shouldn't see any weird movement on the lower joints. You can see that the little cart is working as expected. So we've completed the two main parts of the skinning process, and we're only eight minutes into the video. So super express video, but really, really um, useful, I hope, for you guys. So we created the rig. We created the joints, and now the joints are moving the rig, and now we just need the final part. We need controllers, because it's very uncomfortable for the animator to have to go into the joint and select the joint to move it. So we're going to be using curves to move those joints. And we're going to create two very simple curves. I'm going to go into the poly modeling tab. Sorry, uh, curves and surfaces. I'm going to create a circle curve. I'm going to make it really, really big, which is going to be my main controller down there. And then I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to move it all the way to the top. Now, both of them, I'm going to freeze transformations. So they're clean. And this one we're going to call camera shape control. Shape control. And this one we're going to call it camera rig control. Okay? Now the camera shape control is, of course, going to be parented to the camera rig control. Why? Because wherever the camera rig control goes, I want to make sure that this uh, curve follows as well. Now, here, I might want to make this a little bit smaller. One quick trick, and we use it quite a lot, is to go into the control vertex options of the curve, just make it smaller, and, and that's it. Now, don't worry about the camera. You're not going to see it in renders, but if you want to make this thing a little bit nicer, one thing we could do is go here, use soft selection, and maybe like bring this down so that we'll never see like the, the line there. 
So if we were to go here, panels, look through selected, we're not gonna see anything. And uh, now the last part is we need to find a way in which we can connect this curves to the joints because we can't parent the joint to the curve. If we were to do that, we would break the previous connection that we already have and then all of the rig goes to, to the garbage. So we need to find a way in, in which we can create an indirect connection from the curves to the joints. And that my friends is called constraints. So we're gonna go here into the constraints and we're gonna, gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the driver who's gonna be moving the object, in this case a curve. We're gonna select the joint, which is gonna be moved by the curve and we're gonna do a parent constraint. So now it doesn't matter where this guy goes or how this guy rotates, the camera is gonna follow as best as possible. And we're gonna do the same thing down here. So this guy right here is the driver. This guy right here is the, um, what's the word, is the driven, and we're gonna say parent. So again, wherever this curve goes, everything else is gonna follow. And that's it. With this, guys, we now have a very simple, small rig that we can use to create an interesting animation. So, it wouldn't be a next two tutorial without actually showing you how this thing works, how we can apply it to an actual render, right? So I'm gonna grab this guy right here. Let's bring everyone back into, into position. So you can see we have our nice little rig here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a small animation that would be impossible to do with just one camera. So, or with just animating the camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start back here. I'm gonna select the camera. I'm gonna say panels, look through selected, panels, tier off copy so that we can see what the camera is seeing. In this case, we're not gonna be looking through the camera. We're gonna be looking through the window and then the window is gonna show us the camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here with the camera looking at Strath in this very like uh, interesting side view like this. I'm gonna select this curve at frame one and I'm gonna hit S so that we animate the curve. And we're gonna animate this curve as well, S. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this guy to the side like this. And of course, I want to keep the, the camera focused on Strat like this. So now we're gonna go here and here, S and S, and we're gonna get this. Actually, it seems like I forgot to animate so let's go back here. We're not gonna rotate that one. We're rotating this one up here. So we're gonna have this shot right there. There we go. So now look at this shot. Oh, uh, one uh, thing we can do here on the animation tab, make sure you have update views set to all so that all of the views update. Now we have this. Now, of course, the camera is completely out of focus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to frame 60, for instance. Let's grab the little car here, bring it back try to frame the, the shot as perfectly as possible. And as you can see, we're now separating the rotation and the translation from the camera so that we can control and play around with different uh, kind of things. For instance, even if I wanted here, I could like move the camera back. Like it doesn't really matter. And now we're combining movements because the, the card's moving in one way and the camera is moving in a different way. Let's see how this looks. So we're gonna get this and we get this like going back. And then going in, look at that, beautiful, right? Very, very cool. So let's see it in real time. There we go. And again, the 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 interesting thing about this, and hopefully you, you can see how, how this is so powerful, how rigging can be so powerful, is we're we're dividing the motions, we're we're adding more freedom for animators to to create some interesting movements because now the camera is not only constrained to itself to its own rotation and its translation it has its own rotations and translation and it's being controlled by that little curve right there but now we have an extra curve down here which is moving the whole thing around and we can create a whole lot of different movements okay so yeah there we go and i'm gonna give you a little bonus here let's try let's see if we can get the lights to work there we go I'm gonna go to the to the um, to the sky dome here. Remember one cool trick about the sky dome: you can set the scale to zero, and even if the scale is set to zero, you're still gonna get the light uh, because that's just a shape. And look at that! Now, of course, the render would look uh, very, very nice, but the, I, I don't have the time to render it right now. But yeah, as you can see, two different kind of movements complementing each other and creating this very dynamic and intense animation, which is what you would see on a, on a traditional like movie set where people are on top of a little car and moving the camera around. This is the kind of control that you want to have. Now, 
If you have seen the robot arm that we do in the first section on the rigging course, you could implement the rigging arm and attach a camera to the front, and now you have a whole range of movement. The rig becomes more and more complex, and that's what my, my main goal with the course. My main goal is for you guys to see that rigging is not something that you should be scared of, or it's not something that's so difficult. It is a little bit technical. There are some rules that you need to follow, but once you understand the fundament fundamentals, you can start creating and being very, very imaginative, very um, original in the way you create things. You can be very creative, that, that's the word. You can be very creative in, in generating new rigs that are gonna be helpful for your projects. So that's it guys, let me know what you think uh, about this in the in the comment section. Uh, as I mentioned in the co fast, uh, past couple of videos, we're gonna be jumping onto some like cool tips and tricks throughout the next couple of, uh, of videos. Uh, but we're gonna be back later uh, in the month with a new project. So uh, let me know what, what you guys want to hear about in regards to tips. Uh, should we focus on Maya? Should we focus on Seabrush? I know some of you have uh, asked about Marmoset. We'll do some of Marmoset as well. So let me know in the comments what you guys want to learn about and I'll be happy to share. That's it for me. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.